On May 8th of 1914, a casket was carried through the doors of St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan, New York. Sealed inside was the body of Daniel Sickles, a Civil War general best known for his bold, but mostly suicidal and headstrong, move to position his troops well ahead of the rest at the Battle of Gettysburg. But this man was known for far more than just one moment in the war. He was a well-known lawyer, politician, and self-confessed murderer. He even met the Queen of the Day more than once, even introducing a prostitute to her. (coughs) This week on Cheeky Tales, we dive into the weird and wild life of the crazy, the brilliant, the quirky, Daniel Sickles. You like that intro, boy? Um, We've never had a break. Got him. In the the intro, but introducing a prostitute to the queen. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. This this is going to be a good one. Hello, queenie. Here's me, babe. (laughs) (laughs) Just, she's working at the moment. (laughs) She'll be here in a minute. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So we heard of the Battle of Gettysburg. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you described- Daniel Sickles. Thank you. But a very uh, Custerish vibe. Kind from, of. From him. Was yeah. Custer, Custer wasn't the Civil War, was he? He was- General Custer, I think, was the he was like, independence. Well, it was the Americans and the Native Americans, wasn't it? He, oh, yeah, it was too. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Got killed by- Oh. Native Americans. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of, different. kind of, you'll see why he's a bit different to okay. the experienced General Custer. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, this guy, I saw a meme on, well, not really a meme. It was like uh, some like history group that I follow on Facebook and they just had a picture of this guy and a disc- like just a brief description of like, oh, you've never heard of him, but here are the things that he did. And it included like some of the stuff I talked about there. And I'm like, I have never heard of this person. Why have I not heard of them? They sound like a laugh. So I had a look into their full story, verified everything that was in that little post. I was like, yeah, that's a story for this podcast. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So uh, I guess we should get into it. Or should we? Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah, we're recording this one a bit late in our cycle, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, and so it is actually New Year's. It which, is a new year. As of release date of this episode was just three <laughs> days ago. So if you're hearing this and it's the 4th of January, boy, have I had a busy couple of days. You've had a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was uh, was your uh, Chrissy break into the new year, boy? It was quite good. That's good. That's good. That's Um, relaxing. Well, yeah, it was good. Okay. Yeah. I I had a good break before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Uh, Coming up into the Christmas period is my birthday. Okay. Well, happy birthday. I think I mentioned that in the last episode. Yeah. We did make a point of that. Um, I'm not doxing myself by saying my actual birthday, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it was nice. Um, Had some friends stay. You know, we did some stuff. You and I spent New Year's together. We did. It was, it was lovely. Saw in the new year by watching some fireworks out the back at the farm down the road from me. (laughs) Don't think that was legal. Um, Yeah, but uh, how about you, boy? Good Christmas break? Yeah, I've had a good Christmas break. Just time with the family. Yeah, I came over the other day and you were mowing. Uh, Yes, I had to get the mowing done before (laughs) a certain procedure I've had done recently. Yeah, you want a nut? You want a nut? (laughs) Is that what you said? (laughs) Well, that's getting cut. Uh, it's getting cut like something else I got cut. Yeah. Yeah, I had a vasectomy uh, performed. So John's a little... <laughs> I can't believe you just said that on the recording, but... Well, how long, what am I going to say? I don't know. You didn't have to say anything about it, okay. but I guess now you have. So yeah, John's a bit tender on the chair tonight. I don't care. It's going to be a, a something we talk about. Yeah. Are um, we going to talk about it more than once, are we? No, I'm not sure to bring it up. I've had the I've had the snip. Your hosts, Aaron and John, in brackets, vasectomy. <laughs> Is that an official title I can yeah. have, is it? Like, yeah. Neutered. Instead of doctor, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and unable Actually, to have children, John Savage. <laughs> it's, it, was, it's, it was really confronting at the point where I was claiming the Medicare because it was whatever. Yeah. And on the Medicare form, it was sterilization. And I never really thought of it that oh, way. Yeah, I guess it is, yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I've, I've just been sterilized. Yeah. <laughs> that was the yeah. only confronting thing about it. The actual procedure was fine. Yeah, you're um, like urine now. Sterile. <laughs> No, the, I, I was probably building the procedure up in my head far more than what it actually was. So it was, uh, I had a lovely doctor. Yeah. Shared some common interest. So we had a good chat while he was yep. doing his thing. Okay. I think we've uh, talked about that for far too long already. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's- I'm sure everyone will enjoy it. I hope so. I'm sure there'll be people out there that can relate. I And maybe there's some people out there that are thinking about getting it. They need to know it's not that bad. It's, yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. Uh, one, before, one more thing before we move, boy, move on. Yeah. Um, I reckon we can chuck 
uh, the educational tag onto our podcast because I had a listener reach out to me. Yeah. And Megan, uh, she said that That's she learned. That. Yep, she learned something from our podcast and was able to apply it to a trivia game. She was okay. What was that? Uh, it was Santa Claus's. Yeah. Original suit color being green. Yep. Yeah. Nice. So we've provided. There you go. Education. That's Someone has first, learned something from first tick in the box. I'm sure there's many things that have been learned from our podcast. Well, I hope so. That's um, kind of the point. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's let's teach some more people some stuff. Maybe when you go to a Civil War themed trivia night, you can uh, you can burst out your Daniel Sickles oh, knowledge. I'm sure it'll it'll come up at some point. Yeah. So do you want to uh, what do you want to do? You want to load your musket and fire away, boy? Look, I know that you're going for the pun there, but I've seen a musket get fired. Oh, it's, it's dope. You yeah. were there that day, weren't you? No, I don't think I was. Yeah, it was cheesy. Oh we were, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, muskets are cool. Yeah, lot of smoke. Yeah, and very loud. And that was, um, it wasn't even proper black powder they were using that day no. either, was it? But it was still just a yeah. huge plume of smoke. Yeah. I would love to have had a shot of that. We were shooting a twenty two, so it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more like. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a librarian just clearing their throat to tell you that maybe you should be a bit quieter. Or someone using a spitball while someone's got a potato cannon a couple of <laughs> metres down. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into it, boy. Let's go. So, fire this story at you. Load the cannons, fire away. Yeah. Cannon, that'll come into it. Remember that later. Mm -hmm. Daniel Sickles was born in 1819 to parents Susan and George Sickles. In the first twist of this story, his birth year is in debate, with Sickles himself claiming to be born in 1825. More on that later. George Sickles was a well-known patent lawyer and politician, so it's safe to say he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, with his parents packing him off to live with Lorenzo de Ponte, who had been Mozart's librettist. Do you know what a librettist is? Kind of sounds like, well, the actual word's librarian, so it's not librarian. Um, it'll be something to do with a certain instrument that needs tuning. I mean, you're somewhat close, um, but in other ways, not at all. Um <laughs> Two opposite ends of the scale. Yeah. Like, what are, am I close or not? Come on. So, a librettist is the person who wrote the text and vocal work of an opera. Okay. Mm. So, this guy worked with Mozart, who- That's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't realise was like late 1750s. So, like was alive sort of close to this story. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's been shipped off to live with this Lorenzo de Ponte. Um, and Dan made the first of his impressions on the world uh, while living there. Um, which would set the tone for much of his early life and uh, actually quite a lot of his life in general. Uh, and he did this by reportedly seducing de Ponte's adopted daughter, who also happened to be married. Uh, he then followed that up by blackmailing her husband. Um, okay, so this is, this is like just what already? Yes, yeah, so this is 20-year-old Sickles. So right, he's like, and he just- Walked in, he's like, hey, I'm here to learn. And you, I'm going to get me here for a kiss, love. And she's like, all right. Adoptive daughter of- Lorenzo de Ponte. And who was Lorenzo to him again? Just uh, He was just some bloke to them. He was just some like rich, smart guy. The, and the uh, family were like, hey, you're our friend. Have yeah, our right, kid for a while. Family friend. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he comes in, he, he seduces this chick and- He was that. married. Yeah. And then blackmails the husband. But um, that is a rumor. There's no actual okay. uh, solid evidence of well, that. That one's lied then since it's a rumor. Spicy meatball. Um, Allegedly. Alleged spicy meatball. <laughs> Sickles studied law in a prominent law firm in New York, following in the footsteps of his father, being admitted to the bar in 1846 at the age of 27, beginning his career in politics by being elected to the New York State Assembly, that is the entry level of politics for the state of New York, the year after that in 1948. During his time as a lawyer, he was accused of many dodgy ethical and business choices. So he's like 120 years old at this point? No. Because you said 1948? Did I? Yep. I wrote that too. Uh, yeah, so he's got that Benjamin Button disease. Yeah, 1848. Yes, 1848. Okay. During his time as a lawyer, he was accused of many dodgy ethical and business choices, being indicted for stealing money, almost being prosecuted for appropriating funds from another man, stealing from the post office, and was even charged for keeping a mortgage someone had pledged as collateral on a loan. So they paid the loan and he's like, no, I'm keeping this. <laughs> yeah. Despite all of this malpractice- Sounds like it's just an upstanding citizen. Yeah. What a, what a <laughs> I know, top, right? What a top bloke. Let's put him in charge of an army. And this is a lawyer. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, lawyers don't change. They're just, still the same these days. I, I didn't include it at the end because it was uh, <laughs> there was so much stuff on this guy. But even at Sorry the- Sorry to all our lawyers. Even at the end of his career, he was indicted for stealing $27,000 from a fund that he was looking after. Jeez. So, like, he was almost- 
He was almost jailed two years before what he died. Douchebag. Yeah. He's already a douchebag. <laughs> he seduced yeah. someone else's wife. He's stolen all this money. Yeah. How old was he at this point? 27, 28? He, I think he's somewhere between 27 and 29. Allegedly, because we don't 27 know. 27 and 31. He could, be, he could be 39 and 41. Yeah. We don't know his birth date. Yeah. He's even- Well, no, it's it's 18, 19 or it's 18, 25. It's 18, 19. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he's a bit of a bit of a smooth talking ladies man, bit of an asshole. So despite all of this malpractice, he would eventually find his way into the political life that would engulf the next decade of his life. Oh, that's right. And now he's going into politics. Yeah. Just an upstanding person you want running in politics. Yeah. So he got admitted to the bar in forty six. In forty seven, I think he started like actual law work and forty eight he was elected. And then in I think fifty we'll get to it. But okay. He's now a politician as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, in 1852, Dan would marry his wife, who he had actually met when she was just four years old, and he was 20. Um, She was the daughter of Maria Baggioli, the woman he was rumoured to have seduced when he was 20. So, the woman that he- uh, Well, yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to need like a Venn diagram (laughs) of like- Yeah. Women he's met and- And seduced. So, he's the daughter of the- Dude, yeah. the she, the, his wife is the daughter yep. of the woman he seduced, who was married. Yes. So, okay. Yep. Just, what a douche. And so, just keeping in mind, she was four, four years, years old. 16 years different. Yeah. Uh, and so, with Teresa Baggioli being four at the time and Dan 20, he was 16 years her senior. And when they married, he was 32 and she's 16. Oh, this that's is- not- Okay. Another 10 or so years, not, not much big of a deal. At that point in time, that's a bit gross. It's said that he only brought her to be married when she was visibly pregnant with their first child. <sighs> and yeah, this is why he lies about his birth year. This is why he says he's six years younger than he is. Right. Because he thinks that 26 is, is a more it's reasonable not. age to marry a 16-year-old. It's not. Yeah. This 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 story started great. Right now, it's, it's, a, bit, yeah. it's a bit down in the gutter. Point. It's interesting, but I'm not liking this dude. <laughs> I, I also guys. don't like him, but his, story, his life story is just insanity. Ugh, it's um, garbage at the moment. What a douche. <laughs> now with his young wife by his side, Sickles would be made the Corporation Council of New York City. Keyword young. Yes, she is Dirt quite bag. young. Yeah. So he's now the Corporation Council of New York City, yep. um, who handles any civil claims made against Who the elects city. this person as a politician? Yeah. Hang on a minute. That- he's going to become a- He's in politics. Yes. He's going to get elected to something, isn't yes. he? He's got a 16-year-old yeah. pregnant wife. Yeah. yeah. What were people- I like had tr- issues with the 1930s for dismantling the ship. I'm starting to have issues with people in eighteen in the 1850s. What are you thinking? Yeah. And they're just like- Who were the other- ca- What had they done? Had they literally like murdered someone on like live <laughs> radio or in front of a crowd for them to go, hey, this guy's all right. Let's elect him. Now- What- a- have you forgotten that I said at the start that he's a self-confessed murderer? Yeah, no. Yeah. No, I, I, I thought that was going to be the worst thing in this thing. It's not. Yeah, it keeps going. Oh, this is the Olympic, this is the um, 1916 Olympics all over again. It's just getting worse. They're already 10 minutes in. So, he gets, he gets made the Corporation Council in New York City in 1953. However, he would resign this position very quickly afterwards because he was made the first secretary of the U.S. legislate. Sorry, the U.S. legation in London, sort of like a like a an embassy light. It's like not so, quite as important as an embassy, but it's there. So, has the president come along and went, "Here, have this position"? Uh, no. Okay. Um, I, I couldn't find out how he got this position. All right. Um, but you got to remember, he's like a pretty prominent lawyer in in New York. I don't care. He's got a <laughs> pregnant sixteen year old. That's just that's like. 400 red flags already. Like, yeah. come on. This guy's not leadership. Anyway, move on. I'm worked up. <laughs> he would be working under the American minister in London, James Buchanan. Did he seduce his wife? No. His daughter? No. He didn't seduce anyone related to Buchanan. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boy, I'm derailing you so much. I'm just, <laughs> this guy's just really ticked me off. He's a quality, and the, and quality the fact that he's getting story. ahead in life. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Daniel Sickles would quickly win over Buchanan, and the two would continue to work together whenever they oh, could. Oh, did he seduce him, did he? Yeah, he sounds like <laughs> it. Yeah. The James Hunt of the 1850s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
he would begin the second scandalous story of his life when he reportedly left his pregnant wife behind in New York, instead taking a known prostitute with him to London. Oh, that's right. The prostitute with the queen. Yeah. Fanny White, I think her name was. <laughs> that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's a stage name, right? That's like, I, that's you a, would that's assume a, so. That's a working yeah. name. It's not an actual I mean, I mean, it's potentially a real name of that time. You wouldn't get that name today. But- he had- he had already been censured by the New York State Assembly for escorting her into its chambers oh. and would now be taking her to London with him, where he would even go so far as to present her to Queen Victoria. Oh, he presented her? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, my lady, here's my lady. Right. But he gave her a fake name using the surname of one of his political rivals in New York. Pretty uh, pretty bold move. Right. Uh, he's still a douchebag, but baller move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, can you imagine, like, Scomo and Albo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Albo's got this prostitute and he's, he's like- uh, he's, he's rocked up to Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Hey, Queenie, this is Your me- Majesty. Uh, Your Majesty, this is me girlfriend, Fanny Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, did you say Morrison? <laughs> yep. Wink. <laughs> Fanny Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you don't hear that name anymore. No, what? nobody's calling their kid Fanny now. Do you remember they? the, um, it's like a viral clip of the chase, like the UK version. Do you yeah. Remember, like there's a really, like if you think there's lots of, lots of them, but the viral clip from the UK chase was like a German pole vaulter or hurdler from like the 1956 Olympics or something like that. Sure. Do you remember, do you remember no, what the answer was? I, One of the, they were all really suspect. Yeah. But so like it's a multiple choice. Yeah, do you, okay, let, I'm, I'm going to look this up because I want to get the other names with okay. it. I remember the name. Jumpy McFrog. No, no, it's much worse than that. <laughs> okay. Found it? Oh, it's a little bit different than I'm, I'm remembering two in one. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's a, it's a viral clip, okay, of, uh, what's, what's old mate's name that does the, the chase? No idea. There? Anyway, uh, Bradley Walsh, right? Um, the question is, in what sport does Fanny Schmeller compete for Germany? Fanny Schmeller. Fanny Schmeller. Wow. F A double N Y C H M E L A R. Fanny Schmeller. <laughs> well, that's an unfortunate. So thing. it's their multiple choices: A swimming, B show jumping, C skiing. That's just unfortunate. <laughs> like, jeez. Oh, the, the other one. That's I'm, not really what you want, is it? The other one I'm remembering. It's like. Um, I was crossing it over. There was like, I thought there was three funny names and it was like, what? Yeah. This person competed for Germany. Mm. Um, the, the funny, <laughs> the funny names one is what is the cartoon char- character Andy Cobb known as in Germany? Right. Dick Tingler. Helmut Schmacker. <laughs> Willy Wacker. <laughs> I don't know the no, answer. I've met a Willy Wacker. But that's, that's the one I was confusing it for. So yeah, that was. And oh. they put that to air. That's not. Oh man, the UK. <laughs> the UK chase is a different level of- i got to see this. You've got to see it. It's- Oh, man. Sounds pretty wild. It's so yeah. funny because the host can't control himself either. He absolutely <laughs> loses it. Well, you would, wouldn't you? And this one question takes like 10 minutes because he just can't- Can't say it. Can't say it. Do you reckon that like in the back, like behind the scenes in that show- Oh, the, like- the, the writers are stitching him up yeah. hardcore. Yeah. That's hardcore. There's multiple questions like that, which are just- yeah, let's get him. Anyway, um, I said she was from the 50s. I was incorrect. She was Alpine Ski World Cup in the 2004 to 2005 season. So it's quite a recent name, Fanny Schmeller. Fanny Schmeller. She was born uh, in 1985. Wow. <laughs> That's just some poor parenting. I wonder if it's like a, a translation thing or something. No, it'd be like, because they're German, right? Yeah. So it's just, just it, German. It doesn't man. mean anything it's in German. It's just Germany. Yeah. And they're like, ah, hey, whatever. But- in English. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. So, yes. Fanny Schomo. Fanny Schmo. Yeah. Fanny Schmo. Fanny Morrison. Fanny Mo. <laughs> Being introduced by Albo. That's the equivalent of what happened. Yeah, here. right. Yeah. Despite this scandal, on his return to the US in 1856, he would be elected to the New York State Senate. Okay. And who elected him? Was this a, like a- peers? This is the people now. Oh, man. Yeah. And what? also to Congress in oh, 1856. This is not a person you want making decisions <laughs> for the country or state yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. He served two terms until 1861 and making his arrival on the federal stage of politics. It's said that his good looks, dashing manner and proven qualities as a good speaker allowed him to oh, rise through the ranks so quickly. I'm glad he said speaker because 
the rest of it was not. No. Anyway, I can't believe this person got elected. Like, he must have been one hell of a speaker. Yeah, he was known for his personality more than his accomplishments. Let's just say that. I also don't understand how nobody was like, hey, didn't this guy steal a whole bunch of money when he was a lawyer? And yeah. everyone's like, hmm, probably yeah. not the best for Congress. Yeah, I'm getting hung up on the young pregnant wife thing. But yeah, yeah. he stole money. Yeah. Also entering the federal scene in Washington was his friend from London, the now president, James Buchanan, who would help to solidify the sickle's place in the social scene of Washington. All right. So his mate has just become pretty- Get yep. in here, mate. Come on. Come on. In you come. Yeah, Let's go to suspect, a couple parties. While Daniel was busy with his political career, Teresa was busy attending parties almost daily, as was the custom of the time. They said that it's actually very important for like the wife of a congressman to be in the social scene. So, if she's not, she's doing a bad job. So, she's just out there every night having parties and stuff. This was the 16-year-old wife. Yeah. By now, she's like 20. So, okay. So, she, they're yeah. still married. He's just been in London with Floozy McGee. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, she's 20 now, actually, because it was 1856 that he entered Congress. So, yeah, she's 20. The kid's four. What? Their kid is four or five. Yeah, must be. Mm. Yeah. Or three, maybe. I don't know. They're young. It was often common for available bachelors to act as escorts for married women when their political husbands were busy with work. And it's possible that this sowed the seeds for some of what is to come in the life of Dan and Teresa Sickles. Um, I think I know where the murder's coming into it. Yeah. So- I'm, I'm having a guess that <laughs> the eligible, eligible bachelor mm. that was common practice, fair enough, yep. escorting his wife probably would have been about her age because she was so young. They ended up shacking up and- uh, Old Danny boy, not having a piece of it, he's gone the old murder and killed him. Let's That's my guess. It. Let's get into it. Okay. The Sickles had a very well-known reputation within the Washington social circles for being a bit fast and loose with their marital vows. And with Dan's history of taking a prostitute to London and Teresa's frequent rumours of spending time with other men, tensions began to grow between the two. Eventually, rumours began to spread that Teresa was having an affair with the United States Attorney General, Francis Key, son of the person who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Okay. It just so happened that Dan Sickles was actually quite good friends with this guy. So he like was mates with this bloke and they're just like hanging out. Despite strongly protesting his innocence, eventually Dan would get a full written confession out of uh, of the affair from uh, with Key from Teresa, setting in motion the most salacious of the incidents in Dan Sickles' life. So what happened here? I right, I'm going to need like again a picture of all these tangled webs. <laughs> yeah. Of who's connected yeah. to who, who slept with who, yeah. who's rumoured to be sleeping with who, because it's yeah. just, it's days of our lives in 1855. It really is. So, the the full story is that, like, they st- Teresa and this Francis Key guy started being, like, partnered up to go to these functions all the time. Mm-hmm. And so, there was rumours about the two of them. And Dan is like, hey, you bunking my wife? And he's like, no, what are you talking about? No, absolutely not. That's crazy. You're crazy. And so then people started noticing that this Francis guy would like walk past the house all the time and come out with like a handkerchief, like a like a white handkerchief and be like flailing it around outside their house and then walk off and then out would come Teresa. And so eventually somebody's like- What? Yeah. He had like a code thing that he'd do outside the house to be like, hey, come out and play. And- Okay. Why don't I just- Okay. Eventually, why not just go to knock on the door and go? I mean, let's. Right. I know it's so complicated. Right. But he had like a love nest down the road that he'd take oh. her to. Eventually, someone sends Dan Sickles this like anonymous letter that's like, "Hey, your friend's bonking your wife," and he's like, "All right then." And he goes after Teresa. He's like, "You bonking Francis?" And she's like, "Boo yes!" And writes a confession out. So that's how he finds out on the twenty seventh of February. 1859. Francis is not long for this world. No, he's not. <laughs> Key was to be seen multiple times during the day. Walking- Stabbing Francis. Oh, okay, sorry. Francis Key was seen to oh, be sorry. was to be seen multiple times during the day walking along outside the Sickles' home, signal- signaling to Teresa to accompany him to their secret love den. Dan, on seeing this, would arm himself with a handgun, shouting, "That villain has just passed my house! My God, this is horrible!" and setting out in pursuit. Sickles eventually caught up with Key outside the White House and shouted, yeah, what? they're like, they're like just okay. down the road from the White House right. and he catches Are him. Are you about to tell me he shot this guy outside of the White House? I don't know. Am I? Yes, I am. What the f- 
So they're on the street. What is this story? <laughs> they're on the street outside the White House and he catches up with him and he shouts, Key, you scoundrel, you've dishonoured my house. You must die. And then shoots him in the leg. Okay. Still. Sorry, he, he shoots him and it grazes him. So it like grazes his arm or something. Oh, he's a terrible shot. Yeah, let's let him lead an army. So then there was a struggle in which Key threw his opera glasses at Sickles. So he's just like, ah. He's just carrying them with him. Yeah. Uh, before eventually Key was shot in the leg below the groin. Falling to the ground. Well, that's an artery. Yeah. Bleeding out. Sickles then had a misfire of his handgun. So he tries to shoot him in the head. Misfire. <sighs> before shooting Key fatally below the heart. Key Rem- would die. Remember, listeners, this is on the footpath of the White House. Yeah. Out the front of the White House. And this is a congressman. <sighs> and who's um, Keys? He's what, what position is he? He's a. Uh, he was the attorney general. Yeah. The uh, attorney general. <sighs> What did I say he was? Yeah, Attorney General. Yeah. Yeah, Federal Attorney General, wasn't it? Yeah. So, not he's pretty high up there. This Have we not heard of this? That's what I'm saying. He shot and killed a dude out- a like Two on, politicians. Yeah. In the middle of the day. So, again, ScoMo and Albo. ScoMo's been bonking Albo's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Albo's like, right, I'm getting him. And out the front of Parliament House, he just- boom, Bang. Kills not once. Him. Yeah. He shoots once and grazes him. Shoots him once in the shoots him once groin. in the leg. Yeah, tries to shoot him a third time. Doesn't I'm, I don't know if it goes off and it misfires. Just fire, yep. And then shoots him. Yeah, and then he tried to shoot him again and it misfired again. Oh so my! Five God. times he tried to shoot three successful. He died soon after. Outside the I I can't stress this enough. Outside of the White House, who's he's got his best mate inside, probably yep. peering out the window, going, "What's going on out there? What's all this ruckus? Where's the Secret Service? Someone's been shot. Surely there's enough yeah. time for them to come out and stop. This is strychnine <laughs> all over again. <laughs> stop giving people rat poison. Stop shooting people out. Oh, what the hell? Surely there's guards like on the fence that have just gone, boy, that guy's just been shot. Well, they did arrest him pretty much straight after. Um, so actually, no, they didn't. He surrendered. So Key would die soon after with oh. Key shouting to those that separated uh, with Sorry, with Sickles shouting to those that separated the two, is the scoundrel dead? Sickles would then surrender himself after telling his wife what he'd done and would be led to jail. So he just like leaves, goes home. He's like, oi, killed you. Just left him on the gutter yeah. outside the White House. Oi, James Buchanan, president, sir, I've left you a present. It's like a cat bringing in a dead mouse, like, oh, here's a present. Hey, baby. It's, oh, my. Killed I your just, bum, buddy. Oh, it's going to get worse. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, this is probably the low point. It's probably. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. It doesn't get worse I've completely than this. forgotten about the 16-year-old pregnant wife. <laughs> As the murder had happened in broad daylight in front of a number of witnesses, the trial was an absolute media frenzy. Think of it like the O.J. Simpson trial of its day, except the guy that did the murder actually admitted it. <laughs> Shots fired. Oh, that's a bad oh. part. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So, you got to remember, this guy's like super popular too. He's like a politician. How? How is he popular? Am I blowing the- Yeah, absolutely. I'm worked up. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. You can keep going. No, I turned you down a bit. So- Yeah, but I'm going to go back to normal. Yeah. You're going to have to turn me back up. This is absolutely ridiculous. How is this guy so goddamn popular? He's a oh, 16-year-old pregnant wife, obviously murdered another politician outside of the White House, stealing money from a lot of different things, took a goddamn prostitute to meet the queen- how is this guy still doing this kind of stuff? You are going to be more annoyed soon. I'm sorry for just recapping the whole episode so far, but <laughs> you've got to understand this is- So, this guy's so, <laughs> this guy's so popular, right? That- How? At the jail. How? At the jail, he's got so many important visitors coming to see him that the jailer's house has to become where he goes to like visit people. So, he gets taken out of jail, taken to the like warden's home- <laughs> <laughs> and he's like seeing people in the living room of the warden's home. Oh my goodness. Even the president came down. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's surely if that happened today, like, um, who's the Biden? If that happened to Biden's best mate, you'd be, yeah. I've got to distance myself from this guy yeah. a bit. Like, doesn't seem to be the best guy, like, best character and stuff like that. No, you gotta go visit him in jail. Again, it's, it does get slightly worse in that way. Oh, so he puts together this crack team of like political lawyer. Why does he Defense represent attorneys. himself? Well, I don't know. But he puts together like a crack team. He's got people that ended up being like Secretary of State, Secretary of War, everyone that you can imagine that was of any importance. And so the trial had everything you could want. 
celebrities, sex, politics, murder. Sickles had considerable support from many celebrities, including the president, like I said. Um, I'm not sure what kind of defense he's going to have. He's done it in broad daylight. (laughs) The front of the White House! The defense team worked to ensure the case was in the media as much as possible, portraying Teresa as a fallen woman who had betrayed her husband and Key as a criminal adulterer. At one point during the trial, somebody actually said, like, on record as part of his defense, that the only thing that he was guilty for was protecting all of the women of Washington from the criminal adulterer, Key. Please. Who's, (laughs) let's not forget, federal district attorney. (laughs) Yes. And this guy is a congressman. Oh. Never mind the fact that Dan Sickles was known to be a bit of a man slut himself. Yeah, prostitute to the Queen. Apparently, that wouldn't be admissible in the trial and <laughs> so you, couldn't be used against him. Are you beeping that word? Because you just said slut in the record. <laughs> I'll allow it. Okay. Because <laughs> I think it's the perfect way to, to like. Okay. All right. He's we're a gonna, bit of a man slut. We're going to have to ta- tag an explicit oh, MA15 fine. plus. I'll bleep it. Just leave the S and the T at the end. People will understand. So, it's a bit of an unfair playing field there for Teresa, if you ask me. And old mate can't defend himself because he's dead. Yeah, so they're just like, yeah, this guy was a- he- he'd sleep with anyone's wife if he could get the chance. And, and let's not forget that they were partnered up. This wasn't they've done it together. Yeah. They were like, oh, you guys go to this thing because yeah. you are taking a pro- goddamn prostitute to, to all London, your, to yeah. all your things. So, uh. It would also be the first time that the temporary insanity defense would be used. With the defense team stating that he didn't, he hadn't had time to cool down after finding out about the affair, and so his judgment had been affected. They also had someone like testify that he made otherworldly, ungodly noises. What? Yeah, what? it's just like they're going for he was insane. Eventually, the jury would reach a verdict of not guilty, and Sickles would be acquitted of all charges. Oh my goodness! There was such pandemonium in the courtroom with the support given to Sickles that he had to be given a police escort to leave the room. S- support given? Yeah, everyone was like, yeah. This guy, yeah, he got free, he got out, he didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. Admitted to shooting him. 1850s are yeah. now the worst. <laughs> 1930s, you've got a pass. You're good. This- Sickles would eventually publicly forgive Teresa just three months later. Weirdly, despite being an actual murderer, the public would be more outraged by his, for- by his forgiveness towards Teresa than the fact he shot a guy in the chest in broad daylight. In front of the White House. Teresa would never recover her public image, and many of the newspapers that had supported Dan Sickles had now turned against him, asking why he was able to forgive her and not Key, and many of Dan's political allies would run for cover from the media storm. So that was the worst thing he did. The worst thing he did was forgive his wife. He became a social pariah for forgiving her. (sighs) Not for shooting and killing a man, but for forgiving his wife for sleeping with him. Sleeping with another man. Yeah. Far out. What what is wrong with the people of the 1850s? I know. Sickles would become an outcast in Washington, unable to have much influence any longer in Congress. Oh, that's why he's an outcast. Not because of the money he's stolen or the yeah. murdering. Not due to the, you know, cold-blooded murder, oh. but for going back to his unfaithful wife. Oh, Despite, man. you know, as I said before, being a man slut, he would eventually <laughs> decide not to run for another term in Congress. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Obviously, the uh, priorities of America haven't changed too much, I suppose, because they're yeah. Love of guns. Obviously, mm-hmm. it goes, it's deep rooted in their history, clearly. Yep. It's just so mad. Like, shoots and kills a guy, and they're like, Outside of the White House! But his wife did bonk him. Mm, I'll allow it. As he was out of a job, the Civil War presented a new opportunity for Sickles when it broke out in 1861. Despite being a pro-slavery Democrat in the past, threatening to help New York succeed secede from the Union, he was angered by the Southern Democrats' betrayal and would decide with a friend to rally, uh, to rally troops to create their own regiment. Having worked as a militiaman in the past, but with no formal or uh, combat training- He doesn't need it. He knows how to kill. Sickles had experience in the army- and was able to put together uh, put together volunteer army units to fight for the Union Army. He would be appointed colonel of one of the units he put together, and would begin his rise to power within the army. Right, so he's fighting for the South. No, for the Union, the North. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, essentially- so he's against slavery. He has no military experience, aside from being a militiaman. He's never been in combat. He has not had any military training, so he didn't go to West Point or anything. But he has killed a man. He has murdered a man in cold blood at the White man. House. 
Um, and so, yeah, they're just like President Lincoln. He needed as much support as he could possibly muster for this unpopular right. war that he's got going right. on. Right, so it's, it's Lincoln at the- Buchanan's out, Lincoln yeah. in. He would appoint a number of political generals whose sole purpose in leading a brigade was to gain support from as many political factions as possible. And it was for this reason that the inexperienced and untrained Sickles would eventually, after a lot of hesitancy from the US Senate, be given the rank of Brigadier General and given command of one of the brigades that he'd helped to create. He's such an upstanding citizen. Yeah. So, he's become an officer Mm -hmm. with no training. Mm -hmm. He's, I think, the only one that hadn't been to West Point or hadn't had any experience that was made a- um, Officer. Mm -hmm. President Lincoln, in addition to needing the support, also seemed to like the fact that Sickles was a bit of a madman, being fond of his aggressive nature, and the two would continue to exploit each other for the rest of the war. Sickles would even become a favourite of Mary Todd Lincoln, the president's wife, and would even be seen escorting her to events when Abraham was busy. He was kind of like the guy that he murdered. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. I was going to say, he was. Yeah. Was he bonking the president's wife? He was not bonking the president's wife. Well, there's no rumours that that took place, but it is amusing. That Probably the killed thing everyone that, who was spreading the rumours. Probably. Sickles would start to get some experience in the war through smaller battles in 1862, with his brigade joining a larger corp. Corp? Corp. 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 He would impress a few major generals along the way. After leaving for a short time to do some recruitment speeches, his return saw him very quickly ra- rise through the ranks to major general himself, which was astonishing and confusing as he had ver- very little experience in war. Basically, he went to like two battles, did okay, and they're like, hey, we need you to go recruit some people. He's like, all right. So, he goes away for like a year, does a whole bunch of recruitment, comes back, and they're like, Major General, pretty much straight away. After a little more time with a little bit more combat experience, we get to the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, Do you know anything about the Battle of Gettysburg? I know the name. That's about all I knew as well. (laughs) I knew it was an important- Yeah, um, they they consider it to be the biggest battle or most important of the war. it's also the largest battle in terms of loss of life in the Civil War. Yeah, right. Um, and it's seen as the turning point because the Union Army were able to very convincingly beat the Confederate Army. Sickles was ordered to place his troops. We haven't mentioned any movies yet. No. So, I'm going to do one now. Yep. Was it in The Patriot? No idea. Never seen that movie. I've seen it. I don't know if it's in The Patriot. I'm, sh- I'm 100% certain that there are multiple movies with the Battle of Gettysburg in them. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Sickles was ordered at the Battle of, Battle of Gettysburg to place his troops in a defensive line on the southern end of an area called Cemetery Ridge. However, when he set up there, when he set up there, he didn't like the look of the slightly higher piece of land in front of him. He decided then that what he really should do is completely disregard his orders and march his troops one mile in front of the rest of the corps that his troops were part of. This left a big gap in the defensive front at Cemetery Ridge and also left his troops with three sides to be attacked on. So they're on this like slightly higher bit of land. Mm. That's completely indefensible. And he's like, "Mm, yes, this is where I must be. The Major General, George Meade, who was in charge of the whole thing, called all the Corps commanders together for a meeting, presumably to tell Sickles that he was an idiot and to discuss his insubordination. However, Sickles showed up just as the meeting was coming to a close. (laughs) Meade decided to ride back with Sickles to his troops so he could explain why isolating his troops was stupid. But by the time they got there and after... um, Sickles had said, all right, I'll withdraw them. It turns out they were just coming under attack from the Confederate army. So Meade's like, don't move them. It'll be way harder for you to to do any defense if you're retreating. Just fine. Just stay there. You're an idiot, but stay there. I mean, moving out of the defensive line, idiot. But having a high ground, that's where you want to be. Yes, but it was like slightly higher with no defensive geography at all. Okay, so it was just an open plateau. Yeah. Idiot. So, in goes Sickles. He's like, all right, got to go in with my troops. And uh, they actually say, like, despite the fact that they got absolutely obliterated and really badly, high casualty numbers, all that stuff, they actually did fight pretty well. Um, but Sickles gets hit in the leg with a cannonball, right in the right leg, obliterates it. Yeah, with a cannonball, yeah. Yeah. Gone. 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 He's given first aid on the battlefield before being lifted by stretcher back to the hospital. And to ensure his troop spirits were still kept high, he smoked a pipe the whole way, laughing and joking with those around him as much as his pain would allow. So he's like, you know what? The boys need me. <sighs> I'm right, fine, everyone. Finally, a little bit of karma comes back yeah. in this guy's way. Many historians over the years have debated whether the move of his troops was a blunder or an accidental masterpiece, as obviously the attack cost a lot of lives within his troops and had left the defensive line weakened. 
However, some say that the move blunted the attack by the Confederates and may have actually had the effect of causing more damage to the Confederate attack by making them believe that making them believe the defensive line was weaker than it actually was and pointing them towards a well, away from where they wanted to attack. So some people are like, he's an idiot. Some people are like, he's an idiot, but it kind of worked. Right. Uh, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. After recovering from the amputation of his leg, which was done the same day, Sickles the heard- The cannonball did it, didn't it? <laughs> no, no, the leg was still there. It was just munted. Oh, right. Yeah. Sickles heard that the Army Museum was looking for specimens of morbid anatomy. So he ensured that his broken and amputated leg bones, along with the cannonball that caused the damage, uh, would be donated to the museum and put on display. Apparently, every single year he, on the anniversary of the injury, he'd go and visit his broken leg, bringing along a date. Prostitute? Well, sometimes. Okay. Nothing says romance like, that's my leg. That's you know. my leg. Yeah. That's the cannonball that took it. Yeah. Hot. Again, a little bit of a baller move. Yeah. Not the, the dates, but just like, <laughs> take my, like, is my leg on display? I'm yeah. sure it's still on display somewhere. It is, yeah. You can still go visit it. Yeah. So if you want to take your hot something to the, <laughs> the museum and see a- Recommended by Cheeky Tails. Destroyed leg. <laughs> yeah. Get that on the Cheeky Tails <laughs> holiday list. Oh, we should start one. We should, Holiday yeah. Destinations by Cheeky yeah. Tails, which is- uh, old mate's leg. Yeah, old mate's leg number one. Chernobyl number two. We haven't mentioned Chernobyl. We Titanic don't. sinking spot number three. It's got to be places we've spoke about. Well, there you go. I've spoken about it. Okay. Anyway, Sickles would immediately begin a campaign to degrade the character of General Meade and to boost his own actions to look more courageous. Sickles believed that he deserved credit for winning the battle and so took to the media and even a testimony in front of a congressional committee to state that Meade had planned to retreat from Gettysburg on the first day of the battle. He also stated that his move may have violated the orders, but that it was the right call to make as it shifted the focus of the Confederate Army. In the end, some 34 years after Gettysburg, he would be awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions on the day for the bravery he showed on the battlefield. Still a bit contentious today. You reckon? Yes. I think it's a bit contentious. A Medal of Honor yeah. for being an idiot, an yeah. idiot savant, as you might put. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Sickles was never allowed to command troops again after his actions at Gettysburg. He would be given various diplomatic postings through America and South America and would spend a lot of time ensuring discrimination of African Americans was outlawed. He also halted the production of whiskey. So a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah, right. Bit of a top bloke stopping the uh, discrimination. Yeah. Stopping whiskey. What a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not forget of uh, all the other things that he's, Done. Yeah, all the other things in his life that make him a bit of a tosser. A, well, he's a bit past the bit. <laughs> he's, he's a full-blown tosser. He would also have a large hand in the creation of Central Park in New York. He lobbied to ensure it was on the site that it is now, rather than a much smaller one in another area. He donated- Yeah. This guy's like, is he bipolar? He's like <laughs> complete <laughs> yeah. opposites. He's, he's like doing fantastic things. Yeah. But doing, just doing dog see things. Oh, just absolutely. Yeah. I can't get a handle. Yeah. I, I don't like him, but- there's a lot of he redeeming was on the, quality. He was on the right side of history for a few things. Yeah. On the wrong side of history for a lot of things. Yes. He donated exotic animals to the zoo and ensured it would be available to all. He also made a ton of money off it by buying and then oh, selling land is. nearby the park before and after it was established. There it is. There, there's, that's yeah. what he gets out of it. <laughs> so did he own these exotic animals that he just happened to donate? I don't know whether he bought them and then donated them. Oh, okay. But the bit that I love is he's like, it has to be this site. Yeah. A growing city needs a big park. Yeah. It's only just so he profited. Don't worry that I own yeah, a no. whole bunch of land nearby it that's going to skyrocket in value. Imagine if a politician did that today. They do that all the time. Yeah, you're right. They do do that. <laughs> and there's Thor making his appearance. <laughs> yeah. In 1967, his long-suffering wife, Teresa, passed away from tuberculosis. <clears throat> 1867? Yep. <laughs> Not long after this. Because that's a long suffering. I just noticed and I, I did it again. I did not did 69, the next one down. Nice. Um, <laughs> not long after this, he would get his most famous post-war position as the US minister to Spain in 1869. Nice. Where he reportedly <laughs> kept up his lady man, ladies' man reputation by seducing Queen Isabella of Spain. <laughs> He would have eat, he would I've have, got no words. I know. It just, the, the queen of yeah. Spain. She was deposed, but she was still the queen. Still? Yeah. How has this guy got so much? He, this guy, if we look up idiot savant in yeah. the dictionary. <laughs> He's just blundering his way into all these Are we going to get a picture of this guy? Because he is literally yeah. just an absolute dirtbag. Yep. 
idiot. Just stumbling his way into this But he's got like situation. one of the greatest lives ever. Yep. yep. Oh, man. He would eventually meet a courtesan of uh, Queen Isabella uh, and marry her, Carmina Cray, and went on to have two children with her. So he had three kids in, in the end. He had the one with Teresa. He had two with Carmina. Right. He would move back to New York to live out his days. He's just flicked off the Queen now, uh, sorry. Yep. Okay. He would move back to New York to live out his days, dying in 1914 and being- 1814. No. Oh, no, you're right. <laughs> yep. That one's the one I got right. I got it wrong. You <laughs> set got me him. up the whole set episode. Set him up the whole episode. That's what I was doing. I definitely wasn't making mistakes. I was setting John up. What an he, idiot, everyone. He, he died before he was born. <laughs> oh, man. That, that was an idiot savant. Got him. <laughs> I got him. And he so, was buried yeah. at Arlington Memorial Ceremony. Ceremony. So, yeah, died. Arlington? Arlington National Cemetery. Yeah, died in 1914. Yes. Right. <laughs> that, that, they worked so well for you then. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, that's Dan Sickles. It's really weird seeing, like, because when, when I was researching him, the start of his life was before cameras. So, everything about oh, him yeah, is right. just, like, drawings and like, yeah, sketchings. Yeah. And, yeah. like, there's no pictures of the, um, of the trial. There's mm-hmm. just, like, drawings and stuff. And then- in the Civil War, there's pictures of him. And then for his funeral, it's like great photography of all this stuff going on for his funeral. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was a little side note. But there you go. Dan Sickles, the wildest Civil War general you've never heard of. I can't, I can't believe you've never heard of him. That, what, that, what a I know. crazy life story. Like, yeah. Born, seduced lady. Two queens. Married his, the daughter. Introduced a prostitute to the queen. Murdered a guy, got away with it. In front of the White House? Yeah. I can't, that's the thing that I can't Yeah, no, right. Like, basically, on the lawn of the White House, he shoots a guy. Yeah, crazy times. Crazy times. But what'd you think? I think you enjoyed that one. I did enjoy that one. Yeah. Even though, just, <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe yeah. the actual guy, but- I know. What an incredible story. That was an incredible episode, boy. Yeah. That's right up there with the uh, 1916 Olympics. Yeah. When I started- Looking into it to begin with, I was like, is this, is this guy awesome? Like, is this going to be the new Dick Best? No. And then as I kept researching, I was like, no. Dick Worst. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because one of the uh, other topics I've looked up is going to be uh, around the same period. Yeah. Uh, so it might be interesting. I don't think that'll be our next episode, but it might be a few down the track. Yeah. Same yeah. period of a, uh, a fellow gentleman's life story. Mm. I don't know if it's that crazy. I haven't really looked into it. Yeah, that was a good one. There was so much in that that I'm like, what? It's just, it just one after the other. Yeah. Just, I don't know the what? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I like that he sees him like flaunting outside in his house. And he's like, I'm going to get him. Yeah, I'm going to get him. <laughs> yeah, and he goes, it chases him. him down. Yeah. Oh, man. And just, even just, this, it should have just, have you seen those things like the memes where it's like a movie? Yeah. And they change like one thing and it's just like credits. So like the first 10 minutes of the movie, they just go, I'll nah, just do this. And then. Yeah, the rest end of it of the doesn't movie. happen, yeah. right? It should have stopped at a lawyer stealing a yeah. ton of money. That should have been it. Yeah, he the end of got- his career should have been there. Yeah, and none of it should have happened. No. Nah. Not just stealing money. Pregnant 16-year-old wife. Yes. That should have been the end of it. Yeah. And it just got- um, Credits roll, movie over. Yeah. But no. no, it continued on and it continued on and just get wilder and wilder and wilder. And like even after he gets his leg blown off, he seduces a queen. <laughs> And then flicks her. Yeah. For someone else. For in a the- courtesan. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Why don't we have a movie of this guy? I Surely there has to be one out there, right? But crazy. Well, maybe what's, maybe, what's, maybe the first Cheeky Tales movie is we do a biopic. So I, I follow a page. Uh, I follow a, a content creator on YouTube um, who I really should know the name of off the top of my head if I'm going to reference them. Weird History. That's it. Weird History. Um. Make sure that's correct. Yeah, weird history. So I, I follow this creator, Weird History. It gives me a few ideas for the episodes. Um, I started researching this on Thursday. Mm-hmm. This morning, when I was finishing off- Episode. They released a, an episode about this guy. That's and I was like, you're kidding me. What are the chances? Yeah. Also kind of annoyed that it came out when I'd mostly done my research. But still, <laughs> I was like, what are the chances this would happen? And now they're going to- Beat us to the punch because yeah. the episodes out a couple of days. It's like when you when you talked about Dyatlov Pass, and then like a week later, Red Web did Dyatlov Pass. Yeah. Also, I did tell you about Dyatlov Pass yeah, when I was well, talking about the concept of this podcast, but, but still, it was like yeah, yeah. 
Anyway, um, so that's this week's episode. I think it's a good one. I hope it does well. I hope everyone enjoyed it. That's. <laughs> I'm gonna have to follow that up next week. Right? Like, yeah. Or next fortnight. How am I gonna follow that? I don't know. You've had some good ones. Yeah. But um, yeah, follow us on social media. You got uh, at Cheeky Tales Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are posting some photos uh, that relate to each episode, so you can get an idea in your head of what this absolute madman looks like. This one's going to have some drawings. Yeah. There's a couple of photos of him too. Yeah. So we'll have something there. Um, yeah. Give us a like. Give us a give us a follow on the socials. Get involved in the community. Be the first to comment. This would be a good one to share because it's just, just insane. Get ready on the beat, boy. That's beep. crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. And if you can, share us with somebody who hasn't listened to us before. Because that'd be much appreciated. We would love for more people to have a listen to this and to get more ear holes filled with our lovely voices. Because I don't know about you, boy, but I enjoy it. Oh, I enjoy doing this. And oh, I, think- I very much enjoy it. And just yeah, I'm lost for words. I'm speechless after this episode. I've blown him away. You've blown me away. You've cannonballed me to the knee. <laughs> I used to be a brigadier general once until I took a cannonball to the knee. <laughs> I imagine that Sean just did the exact same thing when he heard that. Just And on that note- No, Sean would have loved that joke. No, he would Yeah, he would. He says it all the time. And on that note, let's end it, boy. All Thank right. you so much for listening this week, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, my God. We just did a real, like, <laughs> ending. That was so good.